Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Simon and today we're going to do something which is unprecedented, which has never been done before in the history of time on this channel and that is we're going to do a microanalysis and I'm and I'm, I'm, I'm please welcome microanalyses as if they were your own children, you know. They're gonna be a new feature. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're gonna be a new feature on the channel, and I'm gonna try doing them in order to do something which is more off the cuff, which doesn't have to, you know, sort of conform to a particular format. Because these microanalyses are meant to be thought spasms more than anything else. They they are meant to be convulsions of ideas. They are not meant to be systematized or rigid in any way and they are not meant to employ a specific analytical strategy okay they are meant to be gathering points for all of us they're meant to be places where we can sort of you know imagine them as being band practice okay we're all sitting around trying out different instruments trying out different rhythms and beats and you know sort of working out what sticks what is true, quote unquote? Where is the good argument? Where, you know, how, how, how do things function in the world? That's the point of these microanalyses. So, moving on from that, today's topic is the yellow vest of the Gilets Jeunes movement. Because if you're the type of person to sort of follow what's going on around in the world, you'll have noticed that shit has really hit the fan in France. The Yellow Vest movement, or the Gilets Jeunes, is a protest movement, and they're cur currently moving to criticize and take down and overthrow uh, Emmanuel Macron as the president of France. Even though that's an interesting topic in and of itself, I completely agree. The thing is, I kind of wanted to steer today's conversation in a different direction, because everyone's talking about the Gilets Jeunes movement. Everyone's talking about it, what they're doing, you know, how we should respond to them, how we shouldn't respond to it at all. And I just wanted to do something else, to zoom in on a particular feature of the movement. And that, that has sort of happened when I looked over some images and some videos taken by photographers, uh, videographers, protesters, journalists, etc. And I realized I couldn't stop staring at the yellow vest themselves. You know, the way they used the symbolic value, all of that struck me as being fascinating. So today, we're going to explore the implications of the yellow vests. Uh, and it's very important for me to, <laughs> to highlight and to underscore that we're going to talk about the garment. We're not going to talk about the movement per se, even though that's kind of impossible to disentangle those two from each other. But we are going to talk about the yellow vest itself. And since this is a microanalysis, feel free to contribute in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Let me know your arguments. Let me know of any suggestions about anything at all. I'd love to hear it. So let's move on. Let's do the first microanalysis. My first very naive thought when, when looking at these images, you know, my thought was, they're a contradiction. The vest is a contradiction. The vest is absolutely impractical in this setting, in this new revolutionary setting. And if you're taking on the police force, mind you, if you're taking on, uh, you know, a militia, basically, if you're taking on a, a, a smallish military uh, force, you don't want to be at a disadvantage right from the get go because you're very easy to spot with that vest on. You know, even through tear gas, even through smoke, you're very easy to spot. With that vest on, you become a moving target for different kinds of debris, basically. You know, you have water hosing, you have rubber pellets, you have pepper spray, all of that moving in your direction with that vest on. And what's more is that the vest in its current revolutionary setting is, you know, it's literally the only place where that vest is impractical. These high visibility upper body garments are designed literally only for visibility, for practicality in mind. They are designed to make the wearer easier to spot. They don't have any other function besides that. You know, they don't make the wearer of the vests any, you know, warmer. And they don't, you know, they don't function as a fashion statement. They are literally only there to make you easy to see. So the vest is very awkward in its new revolutionary context. In every single photograph, uh, in every single video snippet, it sort of competes for your attention. 
You can have smoke, you can have flames, you can have tip cars, graffiti, none of that. Absolutely none of that stands out next to the vest. It's perhaps even more noticeable than the property damage, if you believe in that uh, bourgeois ideology, that bourgeois notion of property damage. And it's, it's even more noticeable than the police brutality. And that's the contention I want to defend today. Basically, the entire point is that the vests are supposed to hijack your gaze. And to support this, think about the people who have been wearing the vests. The people wearing the vests are people who have largely been ignored to a huge extent historically. The vest in this case serves as a lighthouse. It's a scream or a cry into the world. A cry demanding to be noticed. The yellow vest is a Deleuzean scream. It's a scream which allows the philosopher, or in this case the protester, to pose a problem. Uh, as Gilles Deleuze said in his lecture on Leibniz, to scream is to need something. It, to need a concept, to need a solution, to need anything at all. It's that desperate. The movement Gilles Jeune, by wearing the vest, scream symbolically. And no matter how or when the movement may peter out, the vest becomes their signature. The vest is the avatar of this movement, not of any other movement, even though it may be repurposed for other revolts in the future, which is a particularly French thing to do, and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but basically, there's this fascinating tension or this fascinating dialectic between wanting to be seen and not wanting to be seen. Because on the one hand, you have the Gilles Jeune movement, which is characterized by horizontalism, which doesn't have any leaders, which doesn't have any um, spokespeople per se, but still, they, you know, you can't really talk about members. You can't really put a face on the movement. But on the other hand, you have this desire to be seen, this desire to be noticed, which sort of comes through the vest. The vest facilitates the noticing. It screams. And that's the point. The scream draws attention to something. It renders something visible which was hidden or neglected or ignored before. It doesn't solve the problem. It merely poses a problem. By wearing the vest, the Gilles Jeune electrocute French society and electrocute French leadership. You know, they try to jolt people awake by wearing the vest. And that's why it sort of competes for your attention in audiovisuals. And to support this, think about the vest prior to the movement, okay? Think about the contexts the vest moved through prior to the Gilles Jeune movement. It still screamed to the world to notice it, but, you know, it was only supposed to be noticed by the right kind of people. Okay, I've got a couple of examples here, but let me know in the comment section below of anything I've missed or if you want something else to to get some focus and some attention. First of all, there's the security at football games. The people working security at football games or at soccer games are people who would usually wear the vest. Then there's the warehouse workers, which are almost required to wear the vest. At least where I'm situated, they are supposed to wear the vest during working. And lastly, there are the guys working outside of the airport. You know, guys who would uh, transport luggage, uh, guys who would work outside on the plane, you know, fixing it, preparing it for flight, people doing semaphore, all of those things. Uh, they are supposed to wear the vest as well. And my point is that it's the relevant people who are supposed to see those vests. The average Joe, the average person, you are not supposed to see the vest. You are not supposed to see the security at football games. You might see them during uh, corner kicks or throw-ins, but you're not supposed to see them if, for example, if a violent, quote-unquote, violent encounter ensues. For example, if a guy decides to invade the pitch, if a streaker decides to invade the pitch, or if just, you know, just a bloke who wants a selfie with Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, if that happens, the official cameras will cut away from the event. They'll cut away to advertisements, they'll cut away to, you know, more positive things to look at, like a family in the stands, whatever it may be. And of course, you'll see it after the game, you'll, you'll see journalists discussing the events, you'll see images emerging on the internet. But during the game, the official cameras will cut away from the yellow vest, trying to attempt, you know, trying to stop the guys invading the pitch. 
And you know, you're not supposed to see the logistics of a warehouse. You're, you're just supposed to order your shite online, go on Amazon's webpage, order whatever you want, and then just see it appear outside of your door a few days later. That's literally it. You're not supposed to think about the exploitation of the workers, the horrendous working hours, the fucking wage labor existence they have to endure. You're not supposed to think about that. You're just supposed to think about the new PlayStation 4 you got in the mail or your new copy of John Rawls' book or whatever. <laughs> and by the same token, you are not supposed to see the guys working the airport. You're just meant to put in your luggage into that little machine, board the plane, enjoy the attractive people working on the plane and enjoying the beautiful view outside of the windows. And then, you know, when you land, your luggage will magically appear there. And that's the point. You, the average person, is not supposed to see the vest. You're just supposed to enjoy the benefits of the vests, basically. The exploitation of the vest. The only people who are supposed to notice the vest are other working class people. That's a very important point. The only people who are supposed to see the yellow vests are other working class members. And this brings me to the movement of the vest, so to speak. I believe the vest has traveled through three diachronic layers, with the Gilles Jeune movement providing the third one. The first layer is the layer of the worker. The worker is usually the one to wear the vest. It's not the white collar folks. It's not this suit and tie guy who's working Wall Street. It's usually the working class people. The vest is situated historically uh, in the working class domain. And the vest actually belongs to an almost universal code, you know, that can be instantly recognized no matter where you are, no matter which culture you find yourself in. You know, the vest may be more green, it may be more yellow, it may be more orange, it may be more red. None of that matters, because as long as it is fluorescent and as long as it has these reflective stripes on it, you know, it belongs to the working class people. It belongs there as a function of society, or to be more fair, a function of the rich upper class. And following that, there's the particularly French context of the vest, which was enacted in 2008, where the French people, the French parliament, passed a law which required all Frenchmen with a car to keep a vest in the car's glove compartment. And I'm saying this is a particularly French thing, but I believe Belgium has a similar law, if I'm not completely mistaken. But the point is that it's not the case everywhere. You don't have, you know, for example, where I'm situated, you don't need to keep a vest in the glove compartment. It's, it's a very French context. And it's important that it is a French context. You know, in, in, in this case, the vest signifies that something has broken down. In the case of cars, it's the engine, and in the case of the French government, it's the president. And this brings me to the third layer, which is the revolutionary context, which is, again, an extension of the French context. The vest, the yellow vest, isn't as immersed in revolutionary iconography as things like the bandana, the hoodie, the mask, etc., which are, you know, items you picture uh, people in revolts are usually wearing, but the vest here connects with the history of revolutionary icons through its first layer, through its being a worker's uniform. Because historically, it's been the minority, especially the workers, who have been the ones to initiate tactics, to change and overthrow. And they've been doing things like organizing and striking and demonstrating. And a further point to add to this is the vest signals that the person wearing the vest exists purely as a function. As a function of society, as a function of the rich, it's a person who's always on the feet, always working, always in progress in a very negative way. And that's why the vest became the emblem, the avatar of this particular gilet jaune movement, of this particular molecular flux. The yellow vest is firmly rooted in the working class and it takes its basic cues from there. But also its appeal impinges on the French middle class as well because they own a vest too. Something that's not the case everywhere else as I just mentioned. And this symbolic reach, which goes from the working class to the middle class, you know, it overrides the concrete impracticality of the vest in the streets. By flooding the images, by saturating the videos, the wearers of the vest are forcing the right kind of people to notice the vest. And the right kind of people is everyone.
It's the people who are in power, who hear the scream of the vest, and it's the average Joe as well, you know, the average voter who, who support the cause and who will probably try to vote out Emmanuel Macron in the next election cycle. And this traveling, this moving from one layer to the other, is what makes the vests move toward revolutionary iconography as well. You can probably name a few revolutionary icons yourself. You know, generally you have the clenched fist, which is raised up into the air, signifies solidarity, signifies fighting power and capacity and resources. And then you have things like the banner, which is swaying over the multitude, swaying over the crowd, trying to change things. And then you have things like the female body, Think about the women demonstrating for, you know, the right over their own bodies, especially in the case of abortion. Some of them choose to undress to grab attention. And why? Because the female body in, you know, in being nude is actually a spectacle. And of course, it's a spectacle because it's been because it's been oppressed throughout most of history. And to the French people, particularly to the French people, there are some revolutionary icons, too. And the vest probably settles itself here. You have the guillotine, and you have the liberty cap, and you also have a thing like the barricade. And Eric Azong wrote a wonderful book on the barricade entitled A History of the Barricade, and I would implore you guys to check it out. There's a link to it in the description box below. So, to wrap this up, the vest as a revolutionary icon is a way to tie the Gilles Jeune movement to the plights of the workers and to the revolts of history. Besides being a pictorial cry, a posing of a problem, a pictorial scream, the, the yellow vest is a symbol for the Gilles Jeune to establish a connection to the past, which gives them dignity and legitimacy in the public eye, and that has proven very successful. A huge thank you to my patrons, Simran Samara and Nagia Din. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. And to everyone else, thank you for listening. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, Felicia!